Greetings everybody, Maximus here. Just a note before I get started to let you know that due to YouTube's strict guidelines on certain topics that lead to videos being demonetized. In this video at times I may have to tiptoe and tap dance around certain buzzwords. Yeah I know it's stupid that I have to do that but as Forrest Gump used to say, stupid is as YouTube does. Okay so with that out of the way. Of course, the biggest topic in the world of aviation right now is the incident that happened to a China Eastern Airlines Boeing 737-800-NG. So I thought I'd give my two cents on the incident itself, but more importantly on whether the 737-NG is still safe to fly. So right now, people all over the world are rightly concerned if they should be worried about flying on a Boeing 737, specifically the NG model. And the answer to that question is absolutely not. First and foremost, it is important for people to understand that the plane in China was not a MAX, so there was no MCAS system involved. The plane involved in the incident, as I mentioned, was a 737-800NG and has been safely in operation for over 25 years and is literally one of the safest planes in the world and certainly a plane that has never just fallen out of the sky before this week. So it goes without saying that I'm not a professional pilot or an aeronautical engineer. So I won't tell you that any opinions that I have are anything other than just that. Opinions. But aviation professionals all over the world are saying that they would be shocked if this turned out to be a Boeing aircraft problem rather than a human assisted catastrophe. But let's get back to the NG safety record for just a minute. According to the aviation consultancy firm Serum, the NG has one of the best safety records among all aircraft, with just 11 fatal accidents out of more than 7,000 planes delivered since 1997. According to airsafe.com, which tracks aviation safety, Boeing NG models had just 0.07 fatal crashes per million flights as of 2019. That puts it among a rare group that includes the Boeing 747-400 and the 737's main competitor, the Airbus A320 family. So it has been a very safe and reliable aircraft. On Wednesday, March 23rd, China just announced that they found Flight 5735's flight data recorder. And that's a good thing, and that means sooner rather than later we're going to find out exactly what happened. But while people are once again questioning Boeing and the safety of their legacy 737 aircraft, Australian aviation expert Neil Hansford says of the incident, which is the first for the Chinese carrier in 30 years, it's unlikely this will be caused by a technical issue. Hansford told AustralianNews.com, I think aircraft technical failure can be ruled out and it will be an external event. But he added, I would get on a Boeing 737-800 in an instant with an Australian or any other carrier. So my suggestion would be, he emphasized, it won't be Boeing or aircraft technical related. Speaking to the safety record of the Boeing 737-NG, Aviation expert and editor-in-chief of AirlineRatings.com, Jeffrey Thomas, said, The 737-800 is the backbone of Australia's domestic airline fleet being operated by Qantas, Virgin Australia, and Rex. He said the aircraft is Australia's most reliable and has never been involved in an accident in the country. And that's also true of the 737-800NG in many other countries worldwide. He said it's just a safe airplane, and the flying public should try to understand that it really is a safe aircraft. Oh, and hey to you knuckleheads who are going to accuse me of being a Boeing cheerleader. Everything I've told you about the NG is merely stating facts, not opinions. But hey, you do you. Okay, so then what could have caused the incident with the China Eastern Airlines jet? Well, first and foremost, we have to say that we just don't know, and everything else is just speculation. But if you recall, in the wake of the MAX accidents, there were many theories out there about the cause of the two crashes, from jack screws to pilot error. And yet, none of those theories involved a thing called an MCAS, mostly because nobody knew what the heck an MCAS even was, because that was Boeing's dirty little secret. And to be fair, in this most recent case, it could very well be that there will be another similar dirty little secret hiding out there about the 737 that has yet to be discovered. But like I said, given the history of this aircraft, that really isn't likely. So then why did this seemingly safe aircraft just fall out of the sky? 
Well, my first uneducated YouTube clown making videos in his bedroom thought that first came to mind was German wings, silk air, and Egypt air. If you recall, all those crashes were caused by intentional pilot inputs on the plane, meaning they weren't accidents, but shall we say terminated on purpose. I know it's hard to believe that it has actually happened so many times in the past, but we still can't rule it out in this case. And by looking at the data compiled at Flight Radar 24, the plane dived from about 29,000 feet to about 7,000 feet, and it seemed that the crew regained control for a short time before it dived for the last time at faster than the speed of sound. This could show that there may have been a struggle in the cockpit to save the plane. From the data, it looks like the throttles were wide open the entire time the plane was diving. Was it pilots fighting each other for control? Or was it something less sinister? We just don't know at this point. But it also could have been pilot spatial disorientation, causing a high altitude stall. But all the flight data evidence still doesn't support that either at this point. And then there's some breaking news just now as I'm putting the video together. Today, Friday, March 25th, Chinese investigators found the other black box, the flight data recorder, along with more aircraft debris over 10 kilometers away sparking the theory that the rear bulkhead failed, possibly due to a previous tail strike that may not have been repaired properly. It happened before, most notably on a Japan Airlines 747 in 1985, claiming 520 on board. In the video of the China Airways crash, it did appear that the vertical tail was indeed missing. Another scenario could be either an internal device detonation on the aircraft, or as was the case of Malaysian Air Flight 17, which you may recall was struck by a missile over Ukraine in July of 2014. In the same article in AustraliaNews.com, Airlines Ratings' Jeffrey Thomas said the fact that there was no warning from the cockpit crew and the characteristics of the aircraft's descent profile initially suggests one of two causes for the China incident. It would appear to have been either a catastrophic failure caused by a major structural failure or an internal planted device detonation. But he also added that a rogue pilot cannot be ruled out either. He concluded that the two black boxes will be critical to this investigation, and hopefully they will be recovered shortly. It's also important to note that China isn't a third world nation with a history of unsafe airline operations. China's airline network is second only in size to the United States. And this is the first major crash involving one of the country's three biggest airlines in 23 years. Also, after watching the video that's all over the internet of the plane falling from the sky, again, I'm not going to show it to you here because stupid is as YouTube does, but I'm sure you've seen it, and if you haven't, you can find it easily. But when you watch that video, it looks like there is some flame and smoke trailing behind the plane as it dives towards the mountains. I could be wrong because it's a grainy low quality video. But if that is the case, that would lend credence to the explosive or missile theory. But please understand it's not my intention to propose any of my theories or theories of others to be facts. Like I said, when the investigation is complete, the cause could very well be something none of us have even considered yet. But in the meantime, let's just consider the terrible loss to the families of those involved and hope they can find a way to get through what lies ahead for them. But I know many of you out there are real engineers, pilots, and rocket scientists who don't talk into a microphone in your bedroom for a living. And that's why I always look forward to hearing what you have to say. So let me know down below. And if there are no ads running before the video, then you know YouTube has struck again. But if there are ads running, well, don't get too frustrated. They're usually pretty quick. And as always, if you want to help support the channel, as many do, the links are always in the description. And on your way out, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.